brings praise and honor and glory to God. And you like it a lot. And what, what did you think of our communion service this morning? If I'd known you were coming, maybe what I've, I've told Corey and Jan about it, please be sure you do your very best. You're on your best behavior because, because Jesus is here. Make sure your prayers are from the heart and they're deeply sincere. I would have told them that. We want so much to be your church in this place. So what do you think, Lord? Were we really remembering you as we partook of the emblems? Did we partake with reverence as we did this? Do you feel that, we're, that we were really worshiping you? That's something that is in my heart, even for myself. So I wonder how, how it went. Lord, did you notice? Even in part of this, we were kind of whispering to each other. Maybe we fidgeted too. Maybe we, you know, had a hard time with being still and quiet before God. You know, we kind of have that hard time, don't we? Or did you see? By the way, you know, God, or Jesus, the, the offering basket is, is right inside the door. Did, you know, when the offering was received, we, you know, we try to teach folks here that, that they ought to tithe at, at least. And, and I think that many of them do. Do you think that, do you think we were generous? Or are we being selfish and stingy? Lord, there's some things that I, I wonder about. Sometimes I wonder if all of this is making any difference. And I know our people are too. Is, is all of this really making any difference? Because we, we meet together week after week, and we've done it for years now. Last year, Jesus, you, you know how long I've been here, been almost a year now. And we had such high hopes about efforts to, to bring peace and, and growth and, and to bring peace, peace on earth and, and goodwill to men. But look what's happened. We're not at peace. In fact, there's all of these things that are, that are disturbing us. And now it's Christmas time again. Last year, many of us promised that we would do better. Are we really any different inside today? Are we better than we were last year? Or do we sin the same sins? Do we think the same thoughts? Do you see any difference in us at all? I sometimes think about, uh, about your kingdom. And I wonder, is our vision of your kingdom the same as yours? Do you see, do we see what you want us to see? And you know, in the prayer that we just prayed, you said that we should pray that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth that is in heaven. But Lord, I wonder, have we looked in heaven enough to find out what it is that you want on earth? Do we really know this? And Jesus, what about your church? You say that the church is your body. I guess it is good for us to see you this morning in the flesh. Because as we look at you now, we can see compassion in your eyes. And we hear it in your voice. And we want to do the same thing. We can see your love and your mercy and your grace, Lord. Is that that we, we want the church to be like that. We really do. Are we that for you? Are we the kind of body that you that you really want? Do we accept people for who they are? That's kind of hard. 
Do we forgive? Do we always reach out in mercy and grace? Is that what you want our church to be? I think it is. Lord, you talk about the fellowship of the church. And I like the word that you use, koinonia. <laughs> I don't know what, what you expect us here with the English language to understand what that means, but you, you called it. And sometimes we fail to realize how important that word is. You tell us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And yet sometimes that seems so hard for us as we look at it. Christmas, you know, Christmas can be a lonely time. We're surrounded by people. But you know, Lord, sometimes when we go home and we close the doors, it's so quiet and we feel alone. We have questions, more questions than answers. I know. I, I guess why? Why do people get older? You know, all the all the phone calls and all the things that I that I get as a minister here, they, they continue to linger long after after they're really ready to die. I guess one of the things are why why do children get cancer, God, and adults too? Why are there diseases that cripple and maim? Why, why do we have this COVID? Why is this happening? Why is there so much hatred in the world? You know, we watch television. We watch all of the, and there's so much hate uh, that is there. Why is there war? Do you realize that they're not having much of a Christmas uh, celebration in Bethlehem this year? Well, maybe maybe they are. I, I'm not sure. Lord, we really do need one another. That's the fellowship that you talk about. And the people that are here this morning, you think about it, we, we really need one another, Lord. Isn't that where we are? Where we just come together sometimes, not even realizing it? that we help carry each other's burdens. Think, think about that. We lift each other up. And I thank you that we're able to do that. And when we leave here, when we leave here today, even though we hadn't counted on it, you know, somehow our load is lighter. And it's just better. Thank you for the koinonia, Lord. Thank you for the church. And then the thing is, Lord, do you think we've lost our zeal, our excitement? I read about the shepherds, and I see how excited they were when they heard the good news that the child had been born. And you know, in our imagination, we can kind of close our eyes and we can see these shepherds that are doing, working so hard to get there. I read about them anxiously speaking to each other and saying, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has made known to us. Luke in chapter 2 writes all about that. And with haste, it's scripture, and with haste they came and they bowed down and, and they worshiped you. I see their excitement and I wonder if we lost that feeling. It's hard, God. I, sometimes I see wise men traveling across the desert bringing gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh and traveling for weeks, maybe even months, to get here. I wonder if we today would be willing to make this kind of a sacrifice. I read about the early church. I read about Christmas. And Christians going out in the highways and the byways and finding people and bringing them in and urging them to consider the love that you have, God. I read it about the apostle saying, Christ loves, compels us. Lord, have we? I guess the thing is, I'm going to ask you, have, have we lost that? Do we feel the grip of your love in our lives? Are we compelled by it, by this love? Or have we become apathetic and 
and impatient. Are we just here because it's Sunday morning and we're going through the motions? Are we really caught up in the, in the grip of your love? And I guess another thing, Lord, do you think we're too proud? Christmas is kind of a time that we can feed our egos, I guess. We can make ourselves feel better. We spend so much time uh, on gifts and sometimes, sometimes we even compete with each other as as to whose house is the most beautifully decorated and what we're getting for Christmas and we compare ourselves to other people. Are we too proud, God? Would you teach us what you mean to say? Many who are first will be last and then last will be first. Would you teach us what you mean when you say we need to be servants and not masters? Lord, I don't quite know how to say this, but my Christmas prayer would be that our preoccupation with ourselves would never again force you to come into the world that you created and be rejected by it. That our pride would never cause you to wash our feet, and that our sin would never force you to carry a cross again. It'll be over very soon, I know, Lord, the way we celebrate Christmas, I mean, that's, that's really the whole issue. And we'll take down the trees. Mitzi and I have already talked about this, taking down the trees and the decorations and things. And we'll take things back to the stores. You know, we've got some gifts that we don't really like. It'll soon be over. And too many of us will be our old selves once again. But this morning, our hearts are tender. And it's been good for us to have you here. It's been good to see you. It's been good to, good to know that you care enough about us to come and to be with us. Lord, we really want to see you more. We really long for the day when every knee will bow and every eye will be whole and every tongue will confess that you are Lord to the glory of your Father. And we long, we really long for that day when we'll be with you forever. So, until then, Lord, I guess I can say kind of a happy belated birthday, birthday present to you. Well, that's the sermon for this morning. Maybe we need to make a rededication of ourselves to the cause of Jesus Christ. And this morning, the hymn that we have selected for this is one that is, I think, so good for us to, to be singing. And it's simply his song, his name. It's wonderful. Let's sing it together. It's hymn number 101. Let's stand as we sing this this morning. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He King, Master of everything, His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God is He. Father, for this morning. We are also thankful for, for last Thursday, for Friday, for the days that we have had. 
the things that have brought you closer to us and us closer to you. I pray, Father, that as a church, we will be your children. We will do your will. Help us to grow. Help us to be excited about our time together. I pray, Father, that you will help us to, to hold one another up, to encourage, and to give comfort. Please we will be with us as we go to our homes. And Father, may this Christmas spirit remain in us all of our life. We pray in the name of Christ, your Son, and our Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise in all creatures here below. Praise in our lovely heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.